Gather round, children, for I'm here today to tell you the tale of an unlikely hero. It's a story of coming from nowhere and beating all the odds. It's the tale of Toyota racing development. How did our hero go from being an upstart racing division to a global leader in motorsport? This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on TRD. <laughs> Turd. Big thanks to our friends at eBay Motors for sponsoring this episode. Guys, I am constantly looking at cars. It's an obsession that affects every part of my life. Some might say it fills the void of searching for my father. Now I've used all the typical sites, Facebook, Marketplace, Greg's List, Auto Trainer, but then I was like, yo, I buy everything on eBay. Why don't I just buy cars on there too? Turns out eBay is a great place to buy cars on there too. And they got a new app so I can look at cars when I'm on the move, because I'm constantly on the move. If you're sketched out about buying a car online, I get it, but eBay offers you the option to use escrow.com to purchase your new car securely. No more meeting a guy wearing a clown suit at the port at 5 a.m. to exchange a pillowcase full of watches for a low mileage 86 Golf. I mean, we've all been there way too many times, right? Go download the eBay Motors app. Click on the link in the description below. If you end up buying a car, you'll get a $100 gift card. That's enough to buy a shift knob or a whole oil change or a steering wheel hub adapter. And I know that a ton of you guys have a steering wheel on your wall and no way to connect it to any car that you own. Let's change that. I know I'm guilty of it. Download the app. It lets eBay know that we're doing a good job and it allows us to make a lot more videos for you guys in the future. Chapter one, Tosco hot dog. Now, if Toyota racing development is Batman, then their Gotham City is 1950s Japan. After World War II, Japan's economy was a mess and its auto industry was no exception. Demand for anything besides utilitarian trucks was low and the few cars that were on the road needed to stay on the road because the average car buyer wouldn't be able to afford to replace it. This led Toyota executives of the day to develop Toyota Technocraft. Technocraft was a bodywork and tuning department with the mission of making existing cars run well. Motorsports were nowhere near anyone's mind at this point. One country that was interested in racing, however, was Australia. And honestly, can you blame them? It's freaking flat, it's freaking dusty, and it's basically one big off-road course. The biggest event of all was the Round Australia Rally, which circumvented the entire continent. The race was such a hit that the Australian government approached the Japanese consulate about having Japanese teams enter. Thus, Technocraft set about modding a car for Round Australia. And this is the part of the story where Batman puts on the ski mask for the first time and goes walking around Gotham City trying to find street thugs to punch. This is the beginning of Toyota in racing. Technocraft sees an opportunity in a special division for competitors, some sort of Toyota racing development, if you will. And naturally, it was called Toyopet Cbco Ltd. But it was better known as Tosco, Toyota Sports Corner. Welcome back to Toyota Sports Corner, Sports Corner. I'm your host, Pames Jumphrey, here to bring you all the highlights from the 1957 Mobile Gas Round Australia Rally. Weighing in at 3,700 pounds and putting out a whopping 48 horsepower, we have the Tosco Modified Toyo Pet Crown Deluxe. After 19 grueling days and more than 10,000 miles, here it comes now. Amazingly, nothing broke. Now back to James in his in-home studio, totally not going crazy and making up friends to talk to during this quarantine. Thanks, Pames. The next year, Japan would take a cue from Australia and introduce the Round Japan Rally. And in 1960, the Japanese Grand Prix. Tosco would dominate all of them. Toyota Racing had developed. Chapter 2, Toyota's first supercar, a.k.a. 
The Dark Knight. By the mid-1960s, Japan's economy had recovered to the point that a luxury car market was starting to develop. Toyota was also seeing financial success from its production cars. 1966 saw the introduction of the Corolla. You ever heard of it? It was a huge freaking hit and continues to be today. But Toyota needed a halo car to start competing with the big boys. So they turned to Tosco, which was now called Yamaha. <gasps> Ooh, surprise. You had no idea that whole time when I was talking about Tosco, I was just talking about Yamaha before it was Yamaha. Hmm? Now Yamaha is the Lucius Fox of this story. The gadget guy that gives Batman all of his cool stuff. In 1963, Yamaha was mostly known for building lightweight motorcycles and some pretty kick ass reed organs. There's more money in luxury cars than in pianos though. So Yamaha set out to find a partner to help them develop a sports car. Now this video is about Toyota racing development so you can guess what Japanese car company they chose to go with. Nissan. Another twist. Yes. Nissan. I am at the edge of my seat. The design was originally going to be Nissan's entry into the sports car market, but before they inked the deal with Yamaha, Nissan instead bought the Prince Motor Company, which already had a luxury sports offering in the skyline. So now Yamaha had an amazing design internally codenamed the A550X on their hands with no one to produce it. So they took it to Toyota. At the time, Toyota was seen as something of a boring brand. Can you even freaking believe that? These guys made the Supra. But for Toyota, Yamaha's design would be exactly what they needed to make an international splash and cement their reputation. Toyota and Yamaha rushed a prototype to be ready for the 1965 Toyota Motor Show. Honda and Datsun both had sports cars in production and Toyota had its own 44 horsepower sports 800. But this, this next car would be a game changer. It wasn't just a sports car. It was Japan's first supercar. Oh, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. That's Whoa, what is that? Oh my Lord. What a beautiful, beautiful car. Oh, it's 2000 GT. Toyota took the two liters straight six out of the Toyota crown and used Yamaha's aluminum crafters to design a new dual overhead cam head that brought the horsepower up to 150. It had a five speed manual gearbox, a limited slip differential and independently mounted suspension, a first for Japan. The two seater super low gleaming fastback had impossibly cool pop up headlights and a lacquered rosewood interior from Yamaha's piano department. Have you ever seen piano wood? It's wood that looks like glass. The car's debut at the Tokyo Motor Show made a splash. But what really got the car world's attention was when they put the 2000 GT on track. They entered it into the first Fuji 24 hour race and most famously the Yatabi high speed test trials, which, oh, I'm hearing right now, we have a man on the ground. Pames? That's right, James, I'm here at Yatabi in the middle of an actual monsoon. The Tosco team has been racing this yellow and green prototype for 72 consecutive hours and 15,000 kilometers. A feat of strength for men and machine alike. This car is about to shatter 16 endurance records and... It's done it. Can I get an umbrella, please? Back to you, James. Thanks, Pames. The car did whatever the 1965 version of breaking the frickin' internet was, and Toyota became that picture of Kim Kardashian with the champagne on her butt. Up to speed. Go download the eBay Motors app, click on the link in the description below, and if you buy a car, you get a $100 gift card. That's enough to buy like a shift knob, or like a little trim piece, or like a mirror. A lot of your cars need a lot of stuff that costs less than a hundred bucks. Go buy it for it. Please. It called me. Your car called me and was like, hey, can we get a freaking one of these? <laughs> up to speed. Japanese cars weren't getting international respect because of a short history and well, racism. But the 2000 GT was breaking through around the world. Road and Track Magazine compared it to a Porsche 911 and in 1967, it became a Bond car. Chapter three, Pony Race. After success with a supercar, they decided 
hey, you know, I think we can all agree that that went pretty awesome. Why don't we make more race cars? So designer Jiro Kawano drew up the Toyota 7. The prototype used the straight six from the 2000 GT, but they tracked it with a 3.8 liter V8. It wasn't enough power to beat the big Chevys of the time though. So the next gen used a five liter V8. And in 1970, they added a turbo, making the seven the first ever turbocharged race car. Because of rule changes, the turbo never got to compete, but still, first ever turbo race car? <laughs> yeah, cool. And then the gas crisis hit. For those of you who've been spared the experience so far, we want to share the emotions Americans are feeling on the gas lines. Listen, guys, I know that you're sick of hearing about it, but it's a part of history and we're gonna cover it every time it comes up. It's called the gas crisis tour and it touched freaking everything. We might have some shirts coming up, so keep your eyes peeled. You'll be the first ones to know about it. And lots of manufacturers pulled back from motorsports because of the gas crisis. But Toyota, Toyota reinvested in racing, viewing it as a way to show off exciting cars that would appeal to a global audience and change their image as a sleepy brand. An exciting car that appeals to a global audience, you say? Sounds to me like we're talking about Scotty Kilmer's favorite car. That's right. The Celica was aimed squarely at American pony cars. If you couldn't tell from the grill alone, they hit big with a Celica 1600 GT winning its class at the Nürburgring six hour race, the Spa 24 hour race, and the 1973 Fuji 1000 kilometer race. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. We've reached the Toyota racing development part of our Toyota racing development story. The iconic orange, red, and yellow colorway is making its day butt. In 1976, after decades of success, the Toyo Pet Co. LTD rebranded from the Toyota Sports Corner to TRD. Turd. Don't even say it. Turd. You are in big trouble, mister. After years of being a punchline, Japanese cars were being taken seriously in the US. So to capitalize on this, in 1979, Toyota incorporated TRD USA. Originally opening as a performance parts importer in California, TRD USA was completely independent of Toyota Motor Sales USA. As the two entities became involved, TRD shifted into a competition focus in an attempt to further Americanize the brand, thus launching thousands upon thousands of unfunny turd jokes. Why are you looking at me? I mean, I stand by those jokes. Chapter four. Is that a Supra? Okay, time to talk about the Supra. Despite the stellar reputation that car has now, the Supra spent most of the 80s being kind of mediocre in terms of performance. Thank goodness there was an official parts importer to offer performance upgrades like LSDs, adjustable suspension, and headlight washers. Yeah, cool. And in 1987, Toyota finally got the engine right in the factory with the 7M GTE. These are kind of like, you know, early boy 2Js. The Mark III Super Turbo became its own variant with 230 horsepower and a sick spoiler combined with almost unlimited tuning capabilities. Super nutsness reached its peak in 1994 with the TRD 3000 GT. This was the street legal version of the Supra entered into the Japanese GT Championship. Only 35 were ever made and I own four of them. The focus on this car would be on improved dynamics rather than increasing power. TRD redesigned the splitter, the diffuser, and doubled the size of the front intake. The new wing could be adjusted to six different angles. I got six great angles too. One, two, three, four, five, blue steel, six. But long before any of this in the early 80s, the Super parted ways from its cool dad, the Celica. The Celica flipped to be in front wheel drive, but don't let that fool you. In 1983, TRD teamed up with legend Dan Gurney and all American racers to enter the Celica into IMSA GT championships. In 1986, they developed the Celica GTO based on the newly introduced Celica Turbo Alltrack, putting out 450 Hurspurs. The Celica GTO won its class at the Road America 500 and won outright at Wilkins Glen, becoming the first Japanese GTO ever to take an IMSA win. Another first, another one. As my friend DJ Khaled would say, we the best. Now, of course, that's what all 
all the rich boy, all American racers were doing, but what were the real salt of the earth, home down drifty boys driving in the 80s? The A86. We did a whole episode on this car. I'll put a link in the description below. Check it out after this if you don't have your sick Toyota fix. Part of what makes this car so legendary is the weight balance. So performance parts had to be carefully considered before they got just thrown down a hill in a Hachiroku run. Gnarly mountain drifting will always be an important part of Toyota racing history. <laughs> Chapter 5, Baja Blast. By the 1990s, there was many Toyota racing efforts as actors who have played Batman. In 1990, TRD designed the 90CV, which became the flagship car for Toyota Team Europe. This was a carbon fiber unibody racer with a turbocharged 3.2 liter V8. It was low enough and had a big enough wing that it looked like a Batmobile, which is very fortunate for the Batman metaphor that I keep forcing into this episode. Yeah, it's kind of a lazy joke anyway turd now back in north america the 90s meant that toyota wasn't just racing cars they were now racing trucks trd was off-roading freaking everywhere including the granddaddy of all off-road races the baja 1000 there's no way to talk about baja or even racing in the 90s in general without talking about iron man ivan stewart this dude is stoned Cole, a former iron worker, he won Baja with Precision Preparation Incorporated, or PPI, in 1993 and in 1998, all by himself. That's 20 plus hours behind the wheel over some of the most punishing terrain in the world, solo. He did it in a T100. Now, if you grew up around when I grew up, this is the truck that you picture when you think of off-road racing. His 98 version had a 4.9 liter V8 that made 550 hertz Also in 1998, while Iron Man was winning Baja all by his lonesome, TRD was going to work on the MR2, offering a wide body conversion and factory tuning it to again, just 35 customers. These ultra rare kitted out Mr. Deuces would be known as the TRD 2000 GT and they look freaking sick curb weight was just 2400 pounds and trd let customers choose whatever tuning specs they wanted so in some cases that got paired with mr2s that put out almost 500 horsepower talk about snap over steer would this be the last time trd would pair nutty horsepower with lightweight bodies <laughs> nah man not even freaking close. Chapter six, baby needs formula. Even though it's much less bouncy than off-road, TRD has had years of success in open wheel racing. In 2003, the Penske team won the gosh dang Indianapolis 500 with a TRD engine. Not long after that departure, Toyota became the first and thus far only Japanese manufacturer to compete in NASCAR. Camrys, Tundras, and now Supras have been wreaking havoc on the ovals and have been the biggest pain in the ass for Chevy. Then in 2016, TRD snapped Chevy's 13 season winning streak by taking the manufacturer's cup. Even though it's been a short history, Toyota has invested heavily in NASCAR, sponsoring events, even starting an academy for young drivers. This is the same model that soccer teams use to spot developing talent and sign them early. It's like I always say, let children drive. Chapter seven, so many turds to choose from. I knew you would come around. For the past few years, TRD production has specialized in off-roaders. The Toyota comes in TRD Sport, TRD Off-Road, and TRD Pro. The TRD Off-Road trim starts to really make the Tacoma trail ready with Bilstein shocks, a locking rear diff, crawl control, a terrain selector. But if you hate driving on streets or need to commute to work by driving through a river, the TRD Pro is your best friend it has everything the off-road does plus a quarter inch skid plate wider wheels a larger sway bar but what's really interesting and by interesting i mean a lot of you probably think this is lame is that you can get trd badging and fun stuff on pretty much every single toyota now for the first time, Toyota is releasing TRD badge sedans with the TRD Camry and for some reason, a TRD Avalon. But in recent years, Toyota has launched or brought back, I can't really figure it out, a different motorsports division. I'm talking about Gazoo Racing. First it was Tosco, then TRD, now Gazoo. There's been as many names for Toyota Racing as there has been Batman movies. <sighs> 
It's not working. Give it up. Now, not only is Gazoo behind many of Toyota's current motorsport efforts, it's also the factory badge on the coolest cars that they make. Both the Supra and the 8.6 are GR branded cars, and though tragically not available in the States, there's even a Yaris GR. Hot hatch that makes 257 horsepower with the most powerful production three cylinder in a road car. Will the coexistence of TRD and Gazoo confuse consumers and ultimately only serve to water down both brands? Maybe. But throughout its history, Toyota racing has evolved. And this heritage means we get access to some pretty cool cars. What are we, Bruce Wayne? <laughs> That's it. That's it. Do the thing. Sorry. Do the thing. I'm out. I'm out. The Buff Sticker Pack. <laughs> get not three not four not six but five awesome buff horses sticker to let everybody in traffic know that you will not settle for a skinny little wimpy horse you only like the most buffest horses ever we got this one it's donut made out of horseshoes we got this one that's just a single horseshoe but it's one of my favorites we got i love buff horses we also got this one that says my other car is a buff horse to let people know that whatever you're driving isn't the only buff stallion in your fleet and then we got this one that is not influenced by any sort of italian car company so please don't sue us I'm really excited about these stickers. I think they came out really, really cool. They're all really high quality. And the only place that you can get them is at DonutMedia.com. I love you.